I'm Peter Dench and I'm a photojournalist. I've been working mainly in the editorial sector for over 20 years. So I've worked on assignment in Ukraine uh, on several occasions over the last decade and in 2018 I was sent to Russia for three weeks to report on the FIFA World Cup, you know, the world's biggest football tournament in the world's biggest country and I also rode the world's longest single track train journey from Moscow to Vladivostok. So it's an area that I've developed an interest in, particularly over the last five to ten years. Over my career I've built up a relationship with various writers and one in particular called Sean Thomas. And in June, a particularly warm afternoon, we met in Regent's Park. We were sat in the deck chairs and, and Sean said to me uh, that he had a friend who was ex-SAS and his friend had said you could uh, fly to the capital of Moldova, then get a bus to Odessa in Ukraine, which was, you know, an active part of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I'd been obviously keeping an eye on the situation and I'd seen the great work that was coming out of Ukraine by photographers in particular who worked for the New York Times. I don't do that kind of work and I'm grateful for them that they do because that means I don't have to. So I was just kind of waiting for an opportunity where I had something to say or I could add my kind of visual contribution to this part of history. On August the 12th, 2023, uh, the beaches reopened in Ukraine. They'd been shut since the start of the Russian invasion for obvious reasons. They fortified the beaches in case of a landing and then the destruction of the Karkovka Dam, which was under the control of the Russian military. And that flooding dislodged mines and there was debris everywhere so they remained closed but then the tension of war the residents of Odessa needed a respite so they finally decided to open the beaches so when I saw that those beaches were open I thought that was my window to go and, and to report from Odessa because I am a seaside lad I'm comfortable photographing on beaches it's it's a environment that I report from you know, globally, often. So I'm 51. I've, I've never been to an active war zone. I usually arrive a year later, two years later, to report on the, on the rebuild. So this one, for someone who feels getting out of the shower without holding on to an armrest is a risk, this was a bold decision. Maybe it's because I've turned 50. Maybe I should have just bought a motorbike. You know, maybe this was my midlife crisis moment. But it felt right, and, and that's what happens in your career. You, when your family move on, you can start to do other things. Logistically, I thought I'd just go. I spoke to colleagues who'd already worked and reported from Ukraine, and the advice was unanimous. Get military-approved Ukrainian accreditation. I've got a copy of it. I think it's worth kind of uh, uh, reading from. So when this was, uh, this was my accreditation. And in, it says, uh, the armed forces of Ukraine are not responsible for your life and health while in the combat zone. That kind of made it feel real. You know, it, it was a six hour coach journey from Moldova, but the coach had more of a feel of going to a water park than going to a, an active war zone, I suppose. There were kids, there were mothers. As you progress through to the border, I was alert to everything that was happening. And if I looked around me, the children would be lying on their mother's lap, playing on tablets. So it, it, it was quite a strange feeling that it, everything is normal uh, until it isn't. The story I wanted to tell was one of sun, sea and sandbags. You know, I wanted to show the lust for life and for normality by the residents, but also contrast that with the destruction and devastation that had already happened. You know, in particular, Odessa was relentlessly attacked after Russia pulled out of the grain deal, which would allow transportation of foodstuffs 
out of Ukraine. So, uh, so I researched areas that had been the recipient of, of missile attacks. So in terms of kit and the practicalities of shooting on a beach, I carry quite a light load. I don't like wielding big lenses at people. And I think you can be more discreet the closer you are. I don't like to stand and zoom in on people, you know, because I think that's disrespectful. Uh, for one, and if they want to communicate with me, I won't be able to hear what they're trying to say. So I shoot wide and I shoot close. And that way, if someone wants to talk to me or react, then, you know, we, we can do that. You know, these, this was a collaboration between myself and the residents of Odessa. So kit is very, very light. So I use a mirrorless OM system, OM5 on this occasion. Shoot with flash quite a lot just to blast into the shadows to even it out and to make the colours really pop but again on a, on a beach where the sun is harsh you know most people don't see that so it's not a distraction for me or for them. There was one particular shot that I was looking for and I remember seeing a woman in a bikini lying on her front and then next to her were two people in Ukrainian military fatigues paddling in the sea and for me that made the whole trip worthwhile my, my heart started fluttering my, my knees started doing the Charleston and I kind of sped and raised the camera tried to calm myself and then started to make that sequence of pictures which was kind of really important to me you know I photographed in Odessa for five days and for balance, for parity, I decided instead to travel to Transnistria, as it's commonly known in the West. And it's a Russian-backed breakaway state in eastern Moldova on the Ukrainian border. It's not recognised as independent by most of the world. It claimed independence in 1992 after a brutal but short civil war. 1,500 Russian troops remain there acting as peacekeepers. So it was quite an intriguing place. Now I was prepared. Moldova is, is kind of considered potentially the next Ukraine. Western press weren't particularly encouraged to go to Transnistria. So I shredded all my Ukrainian documents. I hid all the memory cards that I'd shot in Ukraine in the lining of my camera bag. You know, I dressed like a tourist, but I still had Ukrainian stamps in my passport. The paranoia kind of escalates. The border guard asked me if I had a professional camera and I wasn't expecting that. When you know, what is a professional camera? Is it any camera in the hands of a professional? Is a professional camera once you've sold a picture taken on it? So this was kind of going through my head and then I realised it wasn't the time for that debate and I lied and said no and he said well let's see it so I got this out of the bag I handed it over he took it away showed it to colleagues and then after a while came back handed it back with my migration card so I genuinely believe the OM system OM5 because of its discreet look and size saved me from a potentially tricky situation and it helped me do my job so I could wield it at people in the capital Tiraspol on questions. I just felt comfortable with this system rather than a, a big old lens. Humour is an important tool in my photography uh, but it's difficult to get right. You, know, you don't want to be sneering. You know, I want to make people laugh. I want to make people think and possibly affect change. And if you have a sequence of pictures that are all very serious, the viewer kind of braces themselves and goes, oh, it's that kind of photographer, that kind of photographer. But if you disarm the viewer with humour and then you drop in a more serious picture, then I think the impact is tenfold. In terms of what comes next, you know, I, I would like to get to Russia again in the future. I mean, whether that's possible, how long that would take, you know, I'd, I want to go back to Ukraine. I'll keep an eye on that situation and, you know, maybe when I'm 71, I'll be finally ready for the front line. <laughs>